Get in your crate. So my id is my ego, super ego, and I'm sorry, my id is my pleasure principle. And then my ego does what? The so ego so, um, like, in, kind of controls the id and the super ego is between the two. Um, the, id keep, the, um, the ego keeps the id under control. Okay. So then the way that it works most often is my, it is my pleasure principle. I want, I want, I want, I want. Okay. And then my ego, my super ego says no. So for me, my pleasure principle says, yes, 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 yes. I want, I want, I want, I want. I got to have it. Pam, you love pizza. Eat pizza, eat pizza. My super ego says, Pam, you cannot have any pizza whatsoever. I am sorry. No pizza. It's not good for you. You're a grown adult. Stop eating pizza. What does my ego say? Well, you can work out for 30 minutes and have a slice of pizza. Exactly. 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 So as you um, talk more about like ego psychology and ego strengths, all of those things come from that ego. So if the question talks about like what level are you working on, it is you're working with the person's ego. That's what that means. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then, um, as we talk about our defense mechanisms, then the way it works is our, our body has a way of protecting us. So he would say that the goal is try to protect my ego. So I'm trying to protect my ego by using these defense mechanisms. Okay. So then give me some of those defense mechanisms, guys. Sublimation. Oh, you're going to pick a start with a tough one. Go ahead. What is that? So sublimate, sublimation is like uh, substituting your the way you feel um, like you're angry and instead of, I don't know, fighting with your spouse, you go and work out. You're taking your, your negative feelings and turn it into like a positive. Not quite. You're, you're, you're in the ballpark there then, okay? So, um, anybody old enough to remember that we played those albums backwards? Yes. Okay. And on the albums backwards are supposed to be a hidden message? Yes, yeah, sub, sub, sublimination. Exactly. Okay. Okay. And not, way back. So, supposedly, if you went to the drive-in, there were like... Um, Coke had like hidden messages in, in, the, the, in between that you couldn't see. All of that is sublimation. So what sublimation says is that um, we we have these hidden desires, these hidden things, and we definitely cannot um, share them because society would not say it's okay. So then what I'm going to do is I am going to share this in a way that makes it more acceptable to society. Okay. Would it be like a female boxer? Uh, it would be because girls aren't supposed to behave that way, are they? No. Okay, so Freud would say that, you know, you've got all of these, you're, you're, you're on your inside, your id wants out, your id wants to do this and this, but society says no, so then you better act like a girl. So then you find a way to take that inappropriate feeling and then act like a girl. Okay, so that's a great example. Um, someone who, um, who talks loud, who talks too much, and they choose a career where they get to talk as a female. Okay, so that's sublimation. Okay. So Give me another one. Like, Go ahead. Could it, could it be like, say, if I wasn't a very good uh, public speaker, but then I channeled my energy and became like an act activist or something? Um, okay. So, w what are you hiding? Because sublimation means you're hiding something. Well, because I, I I wasn't good at you know public speaking, and then I got older and became like a you know, public, I don't know, for, I don't know, I'm confused. Um, okay, so. Hey, the, hey, can what, you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. What's the different? so it sounds very similar to compensation. I think that's why people are getting confused, at least I am, like, it, okay. it mirrors compensation to a degree. So, so sublimation is hiding something that's not appropriate to society. <clears throat> So that's, that's what the difference is. 
Okay, so sublimation is it's it's hidden like those those secret messages on the back of the thing. It's secret. And if society finds out that I really like to like butcher animals and play in blood, they wouldn't be okay with that. But if I am a doctor and a surgeon and I actually get to hold your heart in my hand, society's okay with that. Right. Does that make sense? Does that clear that up? Yeah. Okay, so it's the, the issue with sublimation is the behavior is not acceptable. I have to hide what I'm really thinking, what I'm really feeling, and then I bring it out as something else. So if you can see, can you see my screen? Yes? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so transformation of a negative emotion or instincts into a positive action, but it's not just a negative, it's a really inappropriate one for society. Okay. Um, so you mentioned compensation, Matt. What's that like? I feel like that would be kind of like what whoever just said about uh, the public speaking situation. That would be more compensation. So give me an example. Say it again. Um, I like uh, like the Napoleon complex. I feel like so like some like a short guy who's loud and boisterous will want to compensate for him being short by like being loud and okay. boisterous. Okay. okay. Um, go ahead. Sorry, that was like the first thing that came to my mind. I probably could use a better example. Go ahead, somebody. How about, uh, oh, compensation? Jackie. Oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> um, I'm thinking about a single mother who doesn't have, their kids doesn't have the father. So they're overspending and spoiling and doing a lot of unnecessary to compensate for the father's absence. Jasmine, stop talking about me, but not my stuff out there. <laughs> so that's what I think of when it comes to compensation also. Um, so you'll see a question like um, a, um, a woman is, is overweight and her friends are out shopping. She can't keep up with them. She feels bad that she can't keep up with them. So then she compensates by buying them all expensive gifts. OK, um, and you, like what you said, Jasmine, is that, that weekend dad, you know, I can't see my kids on the weekday, but when I get them, I'm going to spoil them ridiculously because I can't I don't have enough time to spend with them. OK, so I'm compensating for what I'm missing. Now, let's go back to the man with the, the short man. Mm -hmm. So so Freud would would agree with that because Freud, you know, he was very sexual and we still use that term phallic symbol. So, you know, we say that many times a man um, who drives that long, you know, F-250 long bed is, is compensating for something he's missing. Right. Okay. So Freud would say that. That's definitely something Freud would say. Okay. So we got sublimation and we got compensation. Where are we going next? Reaction for the information. Okay. So what's that one? Uh, reaction from reaction is you, uh, let's say, um, African-American, and I, I am hanging out with, um, say, uh, say, Latinos or whites, and I secretly don't like them, but I'm hanging out with them. Um, that would that would work. That would work. Um, so I'm forming a reaction opposite of what I really feel. OK, so you wouldn't really just hang out with them. You'd probably like, um, you know, invite them to dinner, pretend like they're your best buds, all of those things, because you're forming a reaction opposite of what you really feel. OK, someone give me another example. Projective identification. No, let's stay with um. Let's stay with um, that one again. What about if you reaction formation? If you know you don't like your boss or teacher, and you're extra extra nice to her. Okay, exactly. Okay, then I'm forming a reaction. I uh, yes. Um, what we see most often on that test is um, I I had a, I got fired from work. I'm feeling I'm worried about money. I come home and do what? Spend it all. <laughs> what do you think?
waste it. So, take my kids so, out to dinner. Take plan a vacation, right? So I'm reacting differently um, while while this is going on. Hey, Pam. Yes, go ahead. Um, so what's the difference between reaction formation and cognitive dissonance? Uh, okay, so cognitive dissonance is not a Freud term. How about that? Oh, okay. So Freud, and you're you're on the ballpark, but that would not be a Freud term. Oh. But isn't that the same thing? Um. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I just like emailed eager. it to you. I'm in the middle of the session, so I can't do a lot right now. Okay. So I'm sorry. So cognitive dissonance that so cognitive anyway would not be a Freud term. A cognitive dissonance is when I have two separate thoughts or two separate beliefs that are not that are not merging together. So a cognitive dissonance is like, you know, um, most often I'll show you the picture of the guy who's um, got cigarettes hidden behind his back because he says, you know, I'm, I'm into smoking. Um, however, um, you didn't um, I smoke, but I don't believe it's OK. So I'm trying to hide the fact that I'm smoking. So my thoughts and my feelings aren't lining up. So the cognitive dissonance, if that were one of the options, you, you need to look and see who that, who this theorist is. Okay. So anything cognitive definitely would be, would belong to like, um, a yeah, deck. Okay. He's my CBT guy. Okay. So, but Freud, I'm looking for those unconscious motives. Cognitive dissonance is not an unconscious one. Okay. 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 So we've got reaction formation. We got compensation. We got, um, what else? <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. Okay. Um, displacement, we'll start with that one. What does that one look like? I'm angry at the cat, so I kicked the dog. <laughs> <laughs> um, sometimes, yes. It is more often that the person that you're you're angry with is it's not it's a boss or they're not they they're not able to share that with them. And then they come home and take their anger out on their family or something. Exactly. It doesn't have to be a person though. It can be an inanimate object. It can be the door. It can be the um, you know whatever. But yeah, so it's most often the, it's either my boss and I can't take it out on them because that wouldn't be appropriate. I'll lose my job. Or it could be someone you just, you're not in physical contact with. You just can't get to them. Okay. So that's my displacement. I'm shifting and again, if Freud, shifting sexual and aggressive impulsives to a more acceptable or less threatening target. Redirecting your emotions to a safer outlet. Okay, so whatever you're feeling, if you're feeling that towards, it's not okay to do that. So I'm going to then take that. So he would say sexual or aggressive pulse impulses. Most often we just see anger. Okay. Intellectualization. Go ahead. I was going to say like road rage would be a good, I feel like would be a good uh, example. For um, so probably not. Because if it's road rage, I'm mad at you. I'm coming out. Okay, that was just me. But if it's yeah, road rage, I'm mad at you, and I'm coming after you. I, I took if I was mad at somebody at road on the road, then they blocked, they you know, um, swerved in front of me, and then I went home and beat my kid. That's uh, in displacement, okay? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. it's typing okay, yeah, the yeah. anger out on the wrong person. Does that okay. make sense? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, intellectualization. What is what's that like? Instead of dealing with your emotions, you're more dealing with facts and logic. So like growing up, if you're going to say my dad used to um, discipline us, say a whole lot of stuff, instead of dealing with that, you're just saying he's a strict person. Um, OK, so repeat that again. Say it again. So instead of dealing with your emotions, you're going to be more logic and facts about a situation. Okay, I got that part. So that made sense. But then tell me okay. again the explanation about your dad. That's what I didn't, I missed okay. that part. So let's just say growing up, somebody may say, how was your childhood? Um, mm -hmm. Instead of just saying that, you know, um, he argued all the time. Um, we couldn't do this, this and that. You just to say he was strict. He was a strict dad. Okay, so you're not dealing with your emotions. You're just you're just kind of, of, of using a different approach. Just covering it up for okay. people who won't really know how you felt. Okay. He was just okay. a strict person. Okay. 
So that's close. That's just when you, you draw the, the definition. Um, but when we're intellectualizing, um, we're using um, research, some Google, some some WebMD, something that that uh, I'm using my brain instead of my heart. So is it like when you have like the, the doctor tell you have cancer and you go and you research on cancer, but you're not accepting that it just gave you that diagnosis. You go and do research. Okay. Yes. So that, that's what he would say that. Cause I'm not, I'm not dealing with that fear. I'm going to go home and I'm a web MD it. Yeah. Okay. And um, the question on the test many times is the, uh, you know, a, a, a wife is dying. The wife, the doctor has told the wife she has terminal cancer and the therapist asks the husband how he feels. And he pulls out all this documentation that he's researching. He say, well, she's fine. Okay. Thus, you know, he's, he's intellectualizing instead of dealing with the, the emotions. Again, so remember, these are to protect your ego. That's what Freud said. These were not conscious choices. That, were, that was your way of protecting um, your ego. Because if you had to deal with that pain, you'd, ah, you know, freak out there. You just can't do that. Okay. okay. Um, another, uh, often the, the question is about um, anorexics. Okay. So anorexics are ego syntonic or dystonic. Their ego syntonic. 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 They're okay. They don't think they're too thin, right? So they're very right. much ego. It's okay with who they are. That term is ego syntonic, if you're not sure, in sync with what I believe and who I am. Okay. So then what you'll get most often is with people who have ego syntonic issues, then they will um, rationalize, not rationalize, I'm sorry, intellectualize um, why it's okay. 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 So then their um, ego, that's again what we're trying to deal with, okay, is ego syntonic in sync with who they are and or ego dystonic. Okay. So then what we're going to do with anything that's ego syntonic is make it ego alien. Um, so it's much more comfortable um, and much more uncomfortable to the person. But I bring up that to say, sure. because my anorexics then intellectualize. Okay. They can explain to you exactly why they only need three carrots today. Right. Right. So instead of dealing with worries or fears, they will just, you know, they do what they do. They write the chart down and they've got all of these things written down because they can, it makes sense in their head. So that's often what you'll see. Repeat that, sweetie. Personality disorders, ego syntonic, ego dystonic. Syntonic. 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 That's why they don't come for treatment. They don't they don't see a problem. It's in sync with who they are. The other thing is I don't like this. It's dystonic. I don't like this. Okay, let's go back down my list. Um, let's see here. Let's do an easier one. We'll skip isolation effect. Rationalization. Give me an example when I would use that. Making excuses. Give me an example. Um I would go to the gym, but I need to go home and feed my children. Um, okay, so let me think about that. Because I'm rationalizing. The definition says converting unconscious wishes or impulses that are perceived to be dangerous or unacceptable into the office. I'm sorry, I skipped that one. Rationalization is convincing oneself that no wrong has been done through faulty or fake reasoning. So when I'm rationalizing, I'm telling you it's not my fault. Like making excuses? So give me an example. I Let's do this say, like twice a day. So I should go. <laughs> <laughs> At least okay. twice a day. Give me an example. Barbara, I give me an example. The job and I didn't want that stupid job anyway. During the time ooh, you didn't ooh. get the job. That is actually substitution. That is actually oh, substitution. Okay. Rationalizing. I could read it, listen to it again. Convincing oneself that no wrong has been done. I didn't do anything wrong. You deserved it. That's rationalization. So give me an example. Is it, I was thinking like I didn't pass. Oh, I don't know. Um, like I, I, I um, How about um, like let's wait, say. Uh, 
how about if I went to the hair salon, but I didn't pay the last time, but I wanted to get my hair did this time. And she said, I'm not going to do your hair. And I said, okay, well, you're not a good beautician anyway. Something okay. like that. So, so it's, it's her fault. It's her yeah. fault. So therefore, you're not going to pay her. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because she messed up. So therefore, I'm not going to pay her. That's a good one. Most often you'll see this in domestic violence situations. Oh, if she had made dinner, then I wouldn't have had to smack her across the face. Mm -hmm. If she had kept my dinner hot, then I wouldn't have had to do that. Not my fault, your fault. Okay, so I didn't do anything wrong. Or if I did, you deserved it. So that's rationalization. Again, those are, uh, again, they're defenses, they're hidden, they're unconscious. Uh, but that's most often what you'll see. Um, I know none of you say this. Um, but some of the students I tutor will say, you know what, it's the test. That test is so hard as opposed to ownership of maybe you didn't study. I'm, I'm not saying everybody. I'm just saying some of my students <laughs> would say that. So rationalization is it's not my fault. It's the test fault. The testing center that pan the tutor. It's not everybody else's fault. Um, that's rationalization. Okay. Okay. Um, so let's see here. Let's talk about um, let's talk about projection, and then we'll look at projection and introjection. What is projection? I'm taking my feelings off. Oops. Go ahead. Projecting my feelings onto someone, so I'm anxious. So. I keep going. I I make uh, what about if a wife just cheated and um, my husband came home? She project her feelings of cheating onto him by accusing him of cheating. Okay, so she he must be cheating because I cheated. Is that what yes. you're going with that? Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? I was thinking more of if there's a, a neighborhood where you don't like the neighbor, you want to put your feelings off on the other neighbors that the neighbor is a bad neighbor and say right. bad things about that neighbor. So you're projecting your feelings of how you feel about that neighbor and trying to put it on the other neighbors. Okay. I see some pop-ups here, but I can't really read them because I'm teaching. Okay. So I always think of like a... Um, a uh, movie theater, okay? So the projector is in the back of the movie theater, right? And it's projecting all of my stuff, all the, for them to see. I'm just going to get to that slide. Okay, so blaming someone else for difficulties or placing one's unethical desires on someone else. Example, a student who failed a subject blames his failure on poor teaching. Um, that's kind of a really surface one. Um, I think, again, I am projecting my, my bad stuff. You must be thinking what I'm thinking, and I'm projecting that. So the projector in the back of the theater, and then everybody, ev I, I go to work tomorrow, and I'm thinking, wow, this dress really makes me look fat. I cannot believe I wore this dress today. I shouldn't have worn this dress all day. It's on my mind. So I am so sure that everybody is thinking what I'm thinking. So if I walk in, because my, my feelings are projected everywhere, right? My negative feelings. So if I walk in and then I see people in the corner talking, what do I think they're talking about? Dress. Exactly. Right? Because this is how I feel and I'm projecting all my feelings. So you must feel that way about me. Mm -hmm. So that's projecting. So think of the projector. They're your feelings, but you're putting your feelings out there and you must feel the same way about me that I feel about me. Um, there's a question that talks about um, a, a mother who um, was not a good mother. She really, you know, regrets some of the things that she did raising her child. Um, so what happens is then she goes to visit her child. Her child is doing all these really nice things to go out of the, to, to be nice to her. And the mother screams, oh, you must be so selfish. Because mother thinks she's selfish, so the child must think the same thing. The opposite then is introjection, okay? So if I'm projecting, that's my feelings are out, then introjection is in. So what does that look like? 
I'm depressed, so I cut myself. I'm consciously incorporating <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Thank you for reading. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> So, give me an example, somebody, and not the one that's on the screen. So, what about like self harm behaviors, Pam? So, like, uh, if I'm depressed, I'll cut my cut myself. Um, okay. So, the the are you thinking someone must be thinking bad about you? Uh, okay. so introjection yeah, so that's... is the opposite of projection, right? So if I'm projecting my feelings out, then introjection is I'm taking them in. All right. So I'll isolate myself or withdraw because I feel like people don't like me or accept me. Okay. There's another definition. Identifying with an idea so deeply that it becomes part of your own person. Okay. So these are very, again, they're unconscious, okay? So then if I, uh, I'm i with a group of people and all of the, the group of people I'm with, um, they all hate, um, you know, Hispanic people, okay? Then I must hate Hispanic people because of the people I'm with. So their feelings, I've taken on their feelings and therefore I must feel the same way. So projecting is putting my feelings out Interjection is taking your feelings in. So the opposite. Has anyone seen interjection on the test before? No. I don't remember. I think I've seen it, but I don't, well, I don't think it's the answer. Repeat, babe. I've seen it, but I don't know if it was the answer or not. Okay, know. okay. Okay. So again, so projection is putting my feelings out. Interjection is bringing them in. So if the group of people I'm with feels that way, if the world feels that way, then I'm taking those feelings in. Okay. Projection is my feelings out. You must be thinking what I'm thinking. Interjection is I then must be thinking what you're thinking because I'm pulling them in. Okay. Ooh, let's see here. What didn't we get? Let's come back to my slide. Um, uh, let's see here. Um, I think that we talk about the biggies. That's a lot of the biggies. Let me go back to Freud's list. Let's see here. There's like okay, 30 of them. That first book. We, yeah, but we only really need about 10. Um, okay. uh, you know, I think the rest of them you can probably figure out. The biggies are the ones that you have difficulty with sometimes. Okay, so we talked about that one, compensation. Ah, conversion, what is that? Is, is that like physically? Uh, conversion, like, uh, like uh, I'm a football player and I uh, hurt myself playing football and I uh, then became, um, got into uh, doing a, a computer analyst. Like when you get Not so mad, that it, it is reserved. It, um, you get so mad or so upset that it go have something happen to you physically, like your arm may hurt. You got, got it. Hurt. You got it. Like okay. So we have the conversion diagnosis of a conversion, and then of course the conversion defense mechanism. But they look the same way. So the example is a student um, unprepared for reports, suffered headache the day she's supposed to live the report. Oh, mute yourself, whoever that is with your kids. They're great, but not everybody wants to hear them. Just mute. Okay. Um, so conversion is the same as the, so with the, the DSM diagnosis talks about, um, I have, I, I see something traumatic, something awful happens and that emotional piece then comes out as a physical illness. So in the, the, the diagnostic criteria for conversion disorder, you know, I, my husband leaves me, I'm so traumatized, I can't walk. Okay, so that's what that looks like, a conversion disorder, the diagnosis. So then defense mechanism is the same thing. It's not, you know, does it meet the clinical standards? 
but it would be the same thing for defense mechanism that, you know, something emotional is going on. And then I, I can't, I, I can't um, do something physical. So my emotional stuff comes out physically. Okay. Um, so I, um, uh, you know, I, I teach college and you'd be amazed on the day that days that presentations are due, how many students are sick. I'm not really sure they're really sick, but they, they say they're sick. So they're converting that anxiety, all that good stuff about having to make a presentation into a physical illness. I've seen okay. that one on the test. Okay. So there's a difference between the conversion disorder that's a defense mechanism and the conversion disorder, which is the diagnostic criteria. Okay. Um, so the diagnostic criteria um, and just a piece of you know, FYI, so conversion disorders, the whole disorder, actually is much more common in rural and poor areas. We're not really sure why, um, but it just is. Those are um, somatoform disorders, that whole kind of thing. That's what they're called. Um, it's somatoform. Um, so they're like, um, what's it called now? Illness, anxiety disorder. One of those. Okay. So, but my conversion disorder, again, that is um, um, the diagnostic tool, which is different than what we're talking about for the defense mechanism. That doesn't require all of those things that it would if it was a conversion disorder. Okay. Um, so why I'm here and talking about those conversion disorders. Um, so um, if we're talking about conversion disorders, we have primary, secondary, and tertiary gains. What would those be? Those are not my intervention. Those are gains. It's primary, like before it happens? So you're talking interventions. Okay, so you're the, there's a difference between my interventions and my gains. The, the gains of these are why would I have this disorder? So what we know is I have this disorder because I'm, I'm getting something out of it. The primary gain most often, so somatoform disorders are that whole attention. umbrella of all of those things. Okay. My uh, attention is my secondary one, actually. Okay. My first one is inside, internal. We're really not really sure why, what, what's going on. It's an internal thing that you're getting from it. So that doesn't show. That's your primary gain. Whatever it is on the inside that makes you feel good, that's what you're getting out of it. Okay. Um, then the secondary gain is then when I get the doctor's attention. Okay. Primary gain by keeping an internal conflict um, outside the awareness they represent in conscious psychological conflict. So whatever the reason for this illness, there's a primary gain, but it's inside. Freud, unconscious, don't really know why, what's going on there. Secondary gain is that's my attention seeking. That is now that, oh my gosh, the doctors are coming. People are coming. We're so excited. To, you know, everybody's coming to see me. A, a very common question, a woman gets divorced and she, her husband leaves her um, and suddenly she can't walk. Okay. Traumatic happened. The, the physical pain, the emotional stuff come, becomes physical. She can't walk. Her primary gain is what she's getting from that. That's on the inside. It's fixing whatever's broken on the inside. Her secondary gain, what would happen? She get it. Uh, you get attention from my husband. Yeah, that ex-husband. Yeah. Oh, I'll wow, come back. Oh, honey. Oh, my gosh. I'm so sorry. Blah, blah. The doctors, the kids. Exactly. Exactly. Then the tertiary gain is when other people gain from her illness. Okay. So the tertiary gain would be then um, they get back together. Um, and because she, she can't walk, um, they all go on a family vacation and, and they get a free pass at Disney. Something that everybody gets from her illness. That's my tertiary level. Okay. Those are gains, not interventions. Okay. Familiar with those? Seen those before? Yes. Yes. Okay. So that's the difference between the primary and secondary um, and tertiary um, interventions. And Barbara, you just mentioned those. You want to cover those? Is that a no? I 
think I lost her. Okay. We talked about reaction formation. The elder brother who dislikes the younger brother um, sends him gifts every holiday. They don't really like you, but I'm acting opposite than how I really feel. We talked about rationalization. I can justify acceptable reason. Okay. The basketball player claims that he missed the shot and lost the game because of distractions made by the audience. If y'all had not made so much noise, I would have scored the winning goal. Rationalization. Make an excuse. Okay. So I left regression and suppression for, um, I'm sorry, um, let's, regression first. What is regression? When you like. Uh, Going back go to back, early back, developmental go, stage. Yeah, early stage. Yeah. Got it. That's an easy question when mom has a new baby and I see my little one um, who acts like a baby because mom has a new baby. Those are simple. But what does it look like an adult who regresses? Like adults okay. who would like say, for example, if they um something happens and they slam the door mm -hmm. um, or um or somebody might something may happen to someone at work and then they go home to their mother and, and um in the bed with their mom. Okay, you got it. So the most common one is that man who's at a board meeting and his boss doesn't like what he said. So he gets up, he slams the door, he kicks the table and he walks out. Because most adults should not behave that way in a board meeting, correct? Okay. So that's my, those are my defense mechanism of regression. So it's easy when you see the kid who goes back, but sometimes the question talks about, you know, an adult who goes back to a later, earlier stage. Okay. So repression and suppression. Okay. So what's the difference between those two guys? burying the feelings okay, they're both burying the feelings it's one it's one subconscious and one is more conscious you got yeah. it which is which so Sub repression um, is unconscious re suppression is conscious okay who was that suppression who just said that i'm sorry i missed that who was it Sherry. okay just say it again you're gonna say it again <laughs> Oh, somebody's got their TV on I can hear. Come on. Uh, Sherry, did you want to say it again? Actually, you don't remember it. Okay. okay. Hold on one second. Whoever's got their TV on, can you just mute yourself, please? Because I hear your TV in the background. Okay. So say it again. So suppression, you consciously do um, and then uh, repression is unconscious. You got it. So suppression is the only one that's conscious. Okay. So of all of his defense mechanisms, he would say that um, repression and um, suppression is the choice. So the question will say um, a woman was um, um, molested by her father when she was a child, but she chose not to deal with it. Okay. That is suppression. She chose not to, you'll see in the question, okay? But it's a conscious one. That is the only one that is conscious. Everything else, according to Freud, was unconscious. You didn't have a choice. It just happened, okay? That is my suppression. Okay. Um, substitution. I think we mentioned this earlier. Substitution is when you, um, what? So I'm going to give an example. Substitution. I had a woman call me um, last week, and I don't think she's in the group, um, and she said, you know, I failed my test um, three times, so I think I'm just going to take the LBSW, the license voucher um, exam. So she's going to okay. substitute one for the other. You got it. So um, so instead of, you know, I, you know I'm, I'm reaching for this, and it's getting too hard, so then I will just go for the lower one. Okay. Someone else had an example? Go ahead. I didn't know there was an LBSW. Oh. Oh. In some states, it depends on where you live. In some states, there's a, a, a associate level licensure as well. Wow, that's yeah. great. 
I was going to say I, I couldn't get into culinary school, so I just decided just to be a cook at the um the local Bingo. the local restaurant. Bingo. Bingo. And and the thing is that I'm I'm just going to tell you I didn't really want it anyway. Okay. So I I just you know I didn't really want to that that LMSW, so the LBSW works best for me. Because again, it's protecting my ego. That's the whole thing about the the defense mechanisms is to protect me. Okay. Good, good, good. We talk about sublimation. Um, symbolization. What is that one? I've never seen this. Oh, I've seen this on the test. Well, not that I've taken the test, but I've seen it on the. What is it? Symbolization. How you spell it? You see my screen? Like a symbol. It's like a symbol. Yes, you can see my screen, guys. Just making sure. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it really is a symbol. So um, it is a, um, the question might, go ahead. No. You have a group of friends, not a friend that you want to see or hang out with. Isn't going to be there tonight, so you go and you try to act the same way with the friends that you have. Can you just speak a little bit louder, Jennifer? I just, just, I don't think we could hear you. Yeah, there's one out, but the one friend that you want to see isn't going to be there. So you have two other friends, and so the relationship you have with them, you try to have with the other friends since oh. he isn't there. Whatever it is. Okay, so something would have to represent that other friend. Talk to Brandon about that lead, that Maybe it's her sister. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. So if something represents that. Um, so less threatening object used to represent another. Most often a tattoo is symbolization, right? It's memory, it's a mm. thought, it's something, you know, I have this symbol because it reminds me of something else. Okay. So Freud would say again, that is something that helps me deal with the loss. So it's protecting me. So that is a symbol. Um, the, the, um, you know, when a, a, a person dies in your family who's in the military and you get the flag, yes. that's symbolization, right? You hang the flag up because that, that reminds you of, of, you know, their duty to the country and also just kind of, of who they were. Okay. So a woman missing her husband finds comfort in hugging her son who looks like his father. So symbolization is just kind of replacing that with something that's safer. Uh, undoing. Is it doing something repeatedly to symbolize the undoing of something? Repeat that. Is doing something repeatedly to symbolize the undoing of something? All right. Like if you, like if you, I guess, kill somebody and you were washing your hands to symbolize, the, you know, washing the blood off them, but just keep washing your hands. Okay, you're back. You're on symbolization, or you're on undoing. Uh, okay. Um, undoing. You just like try to. You're washing your hands, thinking. Try to erase the fact that you just killed somebody. Yeah. Yeah. So undoing is, yeah, I'm trying to get rid of the guilt, get rid of the, um, whoever's having paper near your microphone, please stop. I think you're eating candy, that's what it sounds like. Okay, so undoing is exactly what that is. So I, um, I did something and I'm trying to do something really big to undo that really big boo-boo. I've definitely seen that on a test. Okay, you wanna give us an example? Was that a no, Matt? Oh, you're asking me? I said, yeah. You, I said, wasn't that you? You said, I saw, I've seen on the test? I've seen that, yeah. I've definitely what seen that. What did he say? He hot water heater pipe. I think I've seen something about, like, water line. Hot like water. a father being... Like Somebody's talking back there. Mute yourself. I hate to mute everybody. Was that you, Barbara? Well, I was. I, yeah, I was trying to talk. Um, 
I don't know who's behind me though. Yeah, I'm gonna try just I'm gonna have to mute everybody. Go ahead. Um, I think I see like where like a father or a parent was like really mean to his chill child or something, mm -hmm. and then like take them shopping or something like that. Okay, like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's exactly what that would look like. So I I have one of us to see is the same thing. So for an example, uh -huh. during the domestic violence cycle and that honeymoon period where they don't know what happens. Mm -hmm. And now he's come into the honeymoon stage and he's leaving her breadcrumbs and trying to very common. Exactly. That's exactly what that looks like. Very good. Very good. Okay. Okay. So then that's kind of the overall of them. So let's just kind of do some questions, guys. Make sure I got them all. The major ones, the major ones. Okay. Has anyone seen on the test the, um, the major defense mechanisms and the minor ones or the bigger, the primary and the secondary? Has anybody seen that? No, Not yet. Okay, so I make sure you haven't seen that because they're, they are divided into, but I think that's usually not on this test. Mm -hmm. um, disassociation, we didn't talk about that one. What's that look like? Um, zone out. Like, I actually had a question on that one. Um, okay. my, un my understanding of it is like, instead of you unconsciously dealing with like a part of your life you just like blank out so like you was physically abused or sexually abused from age five to six whenever that's a topic you just kind of blank out or don't know or don't okay. talk about okay. or zone out. um so so um close yeah so again so did disassociative identity disorder is one again one of our major disorders correct um, so um, if you've seen the movie Precious, that's usually the example I use um, when when things are um, happening to her body, her mom's boyfriend is abusing her, her mom is being mean um, in her mind. She sees this. Um, she sees herself dancing on the dance floor with this, you know, she's all dressed up with this very handsome boy. So that's disassociated. So that is, um, we used to call that, that diagnosis MPD. We don't use that anymore, but we do believe that there's a part of your unconscious that kind of separates to protect your ego, your body from what's happening, your, you know, your ego, your mind, your soul, that's what I'm going to call it, from what's happening to your body. So to disassociate would just be, um, again, a way of protecting when something's going on. Okay. So to disassociate, according again to Freud, would be then, you know, um, and you just gave me an example. So I am, um, I, I was physically attacked um, and then I, I disassociated. So I don't remember it. My body has kind of protected me from, from that happened to like another person. Um, people have described it as like kind of looking down on their body as, as, as it happens to them. Like they, they know it's happened. They can, they know it, but yet there's a way of just kind of protecting that. So it looks like it's happening to somebody else. Shock. Yeah, to people. If they're uh, triggered in that, like if somebody's triggered, mm -hmm. and let's say the fawn rather than the fight or flight and they stop and it's kind of like deer in the headlight. And you're 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 sitting there and you're looking. You can see what's going on, but you're not thinking about anything that actually is happening because exactly. you have dissociated from that episode. Okay, um, and it, it's it, it numbs you, right? So you're 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 numb because it's not happening to your body. It's happening. You can see it, so you don't actually feel it. Would that be correct? Okay. Okie dokie. So um, let's see here. Can you see my screen with 181? What's true about Freud's idea of the pre-conscious mind? If you see the term subconscious on the test, that is never the right answer. Subconscious is a, a lay term used for people who are not in the profession. And if you're in the profession, you would know that it's a pre-conscious, not a subconscious, according to the test. One eighty one. Can you see my screen? Ma'am, yes. I can't see the screen. You cannot? No. Nah.
How about now? Yes. Okay. 181. One, which is true about Freud's idea of the pre-conscious mind? A, it contains only hidden or forgotten memories. B, it contains only what is happening in the present. C, it, it's our mind state before we were born. D, it contains both hidden memories and what is happening. What's in my pre-conscious? A. 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 Okay. It only contains what is happening in the present. That is not correct. That is my conscious. Mm. My conscious is B. Okay. So that's my conscious mind. Okay. A is um, an apple. A is an apple okay. or D. Okay. Um, A, who said that? I did. Bria. Okay, Bria. Yeah. Explain it to me. Oh, Lord. <laughs> You know, oh. even if it's the right answer, you still got to explain it to me. And not, it's not enough to know the answer. You have to know why it's the answer. Because in our pre-conscious mind, like this is when you were telling us about the phone number thing just now. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. I remember my first phone number, even though I kind of forgot it. But it's <laughs> I know it. you're like 20. You probably have only had one number. Okay. So right. like... <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes, that is correct. <laughs> it, it contains hidden or forgotten memories, but we can retrieve them without a psychotherapist coming in. You got it. Okay. Uh, 120, oh, sorry, 182. Nathan has been working, has been working on cutting down on drinking. He tells you he passed a state store. My assumption is that's a liquor store um, and found myself pulling into the lot. He denies giving much conscious thought to it. Nathan is describing the workings of what? Is it the id? It is the id. The devil made me do it. Right? That's right. my id. My id. Perfect. Um, before I go on, so let's talk just a little bit about countertransference and transference because that is a Freudian term. So when Freud first started, he really encouraged transference. Remember, he worked with, again, women oh. who, um, you know, he, he wanted you to put your feelings on to him. So he really encouraged that. So is countertransference good or bad? Is it good or bad, guys? Countertransference. If you're not good. Who said neither? Barb. Barb, you are correct. Why? I don't know. I just remember somebody telling me that. <laughs> because according to Freud, you didn't have control over it. It's like your defense mechanisms. You didn't have control. It just is what it is. So then we learn to deal with it. So to ignore it would not be okay. Okay. So if I've got a client that reminds me of, you know, you know, someone that I hated, I need to be aware of that. So then I'm not treating them differently. But according to Freud, that was an unconscious process. So it just is what it is. You have to deal with it, but it's either good nor bad. So on the same lines, then when it comes to supervision on the test, what are the reasons you would seek see a supervisor? I can hear you twice. Ah, let's see here. Let me see what's going on. Let me see if I can mute somebody. I'm, I've got, I'm echoing. Is that what you're telling me? Yeah, I can hit, I could double up. Okay, it's not open there. I'm sure it's not open any place else. It's not open there. Who's going to Jamaica? Oh, I am. Sorry. Is that that conversation? Is that you're going to Jamaica? I'm just saying, if you're going, you're going to bite us all, right? Uh, can you right now? <laughs> I can't. Just mute it until you're done. <laughs> it's my husband talking in the back. Okay. So unless he's inviting us all, then you have to mute yourself. I'm sorry. Okay. He's going now. <laughs> am I still, am I still, um, you're hearing me twice? No, it's better now. Okay. Okay. So I was talking about counter transference and transference. So the question was um, for the exam, when do I seek out my supervisor? Okay. 
when you're thinking that so you got counter transparent, counter transparent, or even transparency was something that that makes me uncomfortable. Anything in that setting that's uncomfortable, the relationship between me and my client, that is the primary reason for supervision. Okay. So um, if the client comes in and they're making uh, racial slurs or things that I'm uncomfortable with, I seek supervision. For the test, you're the best social worker in the world. Okay. You don't get to refer out. The, the times you can refer out are when it's out of your what? Out of scope. scope. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And then sometimes even then, if the question says you're in a rural setting and it's out of your scope, you can't, there's only referring to. So what do you do then? Then you got to. Exactly. You figure it out. You learn how to do it. You got it. You got it. So, but for the test, the, the reasons, the main reasons we seek supervision is because something that's happening within the therapeutic relationship between me and my client. Okay. Okay. So that, and again, there are no hard and fast rules with the test. And um, the, the, the goal is that you um, look at the questions, you take those four possible answers, and then you really kind of look at those four choices and look at what's the best choice. What they're looking for is critical thinking skills that you know what to do in that exact instance. And part of that is making sure that you understand what the question is asking. But some of the rules are, again, you, you are the best. Refer to someone who has more experience is never the right answer. Do nothing is never the right answer. Okay. So, Pam, I think that with, I'm going to speak for me, maybe this someone is. else on the line. This is Sherry. Mm -hmm. This is Sherry. That's, that's my biggest issue. Like, um, mo I think I take it maybe two times. And I think my thing is, trying to get the best answer like i can narrow it down to two but then trying to pick the one between those two and each time i've taken it i've missed it by six or eight points okay um barbara this can is you hear me? Sherry. Yes, no, no, barbara, barbara. Okay. so what's the plan what do you do you narrow it down to two and then what do you do um i would go back to like the maybe the last sentence or the sentence before that and just figure out what um which one is related, like more relates to what exactly. they're asking? Yeah, exactly. So okay. oftentimes in the vignettes, there are four questions, there are four choices. There are two that are obviously not it, okay? And, and those okay. of you who use an acronym or far feet, feel free. I, I just don't have enough brain cells left to do that. I, no, okay, I don't. I had it. So what, what I teach is then, if it's a first question, the assumption is you're going to assess. And assess doesn't mean the word assess. It means get more information. What can I look at to give me more information? If I go to the doctor tomorrow and I tell him, you know, my leg hurts and he goes and he amputates my leg without asking me any other questions, there's a problem. Okay. So you get as much information as possible before I intervene, Ask before I make an intervention. Okay. Um, so with those two questions, with those two answers, I will take the two away that don't make any sense. The two that I have left, then I'm going to go back to the question and prove that it's which one of those is right based on the question. Okay. Because many times they'll give you a statement that's true. It's exact statement, but it doesn't answer the question. Okay. Yeah. So you really have to go back to the sweat. And people have told you that the answer is in the stem, that uh -huh. you know, the big part, it is there. That okay. works for my, my vignettes. My recall, the thing, okay. recognition, things you're supposed to know, you might not have that clue. But in okay. general, with the other ones, you go back to the question, what are you looking for? Okay. We And I've said, if you've worked with me before, um, um, I've taught um, how to pass the SATs, the ACTs, the GREs to people that English is not their first language. And what we teach is because sometimes they, they miss half, they don't understand all the vocabulary. So look for words that match. Look for like what, what matches, go back to my question and try to figure it out. Okay. okay. How can I get the message not on the screen? I don't know what you mean. Um, I don't know what you mean. Um, if it's, you can, if you go up to the, um, at the top, there's a square. 
and a square lets you kind of change how you see things. So I don't know if that answers the question. Okay, so let's look at number um, oh, 184. Lindsay has been mulling over a decision to leave or stay with her husband. She has a list of pros and cons. According to Freud, writing them was a function of what? The eating, you know? Yeah, and that what my ego does? The good and the bad? My it is my wants, my super ego is my no way, and my ego balances it out. Perfect. Between the two, yes. Okay. Ego defense, um, number 185, ego defense mechanisms in and of themselves are on the unconscious C. level. C. A yeah. and C. A and C, D. And you won't find these on the test. I get that. No. I just want you to, this, these are just a content base. Understand the content. Okay. okay. But definitely A and C. They're normal. They happen and they are always unconscious, okay. except for which one? Um, the sub suppression. 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 Bingo. Yeah. Bingo. Bingo. You get the bell. I've seen this on the test. The ego defense. Was it conscious? Unconscious? It had mm -hmm. four things listed. Okay. It is unconscious except for suppression. So unless it clearly says that one, the assumption is all of those are unconscious that we don't, we're not making a choice. Just is what it is. Okay. Um, 186. Marlene is talking about an adverse relationship experience. She begins to refer to a past abusive relationship that she engaged in. Then she says she doesn't really want to think about it and moves on. She is exhibiting what? Suppression. Why? Because she can't. Because she she's really no. She's not talking. About you got she it. Doesn't. She's consciously suppressing. She mm -hmm. clearly says. She doesn't want to think about it. about it, but so she knows it's not like repression, repression. I don't know. I don't know what's there. Suppression is. And again, that was what Freud believed. His job was to bring those things from the unconscious to the conscious. Okay. Let's look at 187. Go ahead. Question. No, I was just going to say like with the way I remember um, repression and suppression, like, you know, the cough syrup. Like you have a cough and you take some of it and uh -huh. you know go, goes away, but if you don't keep get you know taking it, it'll come right back. That's okay. how I think of that. Like you're suppressing it, like it'll go away for you know a little while. Why you know you're not thinking of it or whatever, and then it's gonna come right back. But depression, you just don't remember it. Like with the R, I just try to figure it out like that. Uh, yes, that is correct. Okay. Um, so 187, Emily's mother, according to Emily, has been very self-critical and self-centered, absorbed all of her life. Emily comes to stay with, um, Emily's mother comes to stay with Emily for two weeks. She gives up her bed for her parents, sleeps on the couch. She openly shares her food with them and takes them to dinner one night while here. Halfway through their stay, Emily's mother goes into a rage and tells Emily that she's selfish and unappreciative. Emily's shocked. You help Emily understand that her mother is exhibiting the ego defense mechanism of what? Displacement. Sure about that? Projection. Projection. She's projecting her feelings. Mm -hmm. I'll phone to Emily. Projection. Displacement would be that she's angry at Emily, so she goes and she, you know. <laughs> she, yeah, she takes a... Um, <laughs> I'm going to reveal too much of myself, but you know, you take the scissors and cut off all the family's clothes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, would be, that would be displacement. Okay. Number 188. Jem enters a session with his arms wrapped. When you inquire, he tells you he's punched the bedroom door after having a fight with his wife over finances again. He's describing the defense mechanism of what? Displacement? Now it's that displacement. Is, that is displacement. Remember, it doesn't have to be a person. It could be an inanimate object. Mm -hmm. Okay. 189. David is obsessed with doing all he can do to interrupt the gay rights movement. Unconsciously, however, Dave has sexual attractions to his best friend and roommate. This is a what? The uh, react reaction formation. Explain that. 
um, because he feels that way, but he don't want other people to know that he feel that way. And so his reaction is different because he wants them to feel like he's a part of them instead of. So he has formed a reaction differently than he actually feels. Perfect. Okay. 190. A willful woman decides to become a lawyer because of her tendency to be out workplace. She's displaying what? Sublimation. That's right, because we know women shouldn't be willful. Stay in your place, keep your mouth shut, and be happy, right? 191. Lisa is shy and likes confidence, but takes on a high status job as a director of an advertising company. Her voicemail does not include her name, but only her title. So does her email signature. When socializing and asked to talk about herself, her work role is the first thing she discusses. She is exhibiting... Identification? It is. We didn't discuss that one, but I think those that's one you can probably figure out. So, you know, that's how she sees herself. That's how she identifies herself. Okay? That's our identification. Yeah. 192, according to Freud, what would he say? A. You got it. The con is the expert. Is that true? Is that what Freud say? No. Carl Rogers would say that the client is the expert. Freud said they were patients and they knew nothing. B is the answer. Transference is the primary role of the counselor. He believed that you needed to transfer all of your stuff onto him. Okay. Issues with your dad, your husband, whatever onto him. Okay. And of course, all the counselor does is interpretation. If you're you thinking that psychoanalytic or psychodynamic approach. Okay, um, let's look at this one, 193. Which of the following is not a technique associated with Freud and psychodynamic theory? Not. Oh, sorry. I think all of them are. Oh, you sure about that one? Was that first one? Cognitive Did Freud really care how you thought? No. He did um, not. Um, and in all fairness for the test, free it's not on the test, but free association really does belong to Carl Jung. Um, we don't give him credit for it, but it does belong to Carl Jung. So the answer then is dream analysis. That's the only one that really belonged to Freud. Okay. Um, and again, so... Hey, I never... Go ahead. Yeah, I got a question. I've never okay. seen anything with Carl Jung in the studies. Is, 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 is and you wouldn't. You would not. You would. So um, the only thing you might know is the MBTI. What's that one? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, that's that test. That, uh, what is it? What is it? Test. The Minnesota. Is that the Minnesota nope, test? Nope, that's the MMPI. My M. Is that my the, M. Go ahead. Is that the Meyer Briggs? That is. That is the Meyer. Not intelligence. Myers Briggs is a. <laughs> Personality? Uh, personality? Yes, it is. Um, and it is, so that's my, my that's my MBTI, myers Brig. Um, and you, you, there's no need to know that, but it is based on Carl Jung's archetypes. Oh, it is? Okay. Um, it no. is, it is. Carl Jung had archetypes um, that wouldn't be on the test. Uh, I teach the NCE, so it would be on that test, the counselor exam, it's on theirs. Um, but yes, yeah, so that's the only time you'd ever see anything about Carl Jung. However, he did, um, he is, the basis for that is the MBTI. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, and that, if you don't know, it's got 16, there's 16 choices. Um, there's a sample test online. You can always take it, um, but you look for kind of um, about uh, who your person, what about your personality? Okay. There's this thing called true color is really cool. Uh, yeah, I've seen that one as well. Yeah. Those were really good yeah. for relationships. I think I like that a lot in like yeah. marriage, marriage counseling and things like that. Yeah. Okay, so I think we got those. Okay, let me just see. Have you a few more? Any questions? You want to ask me anything, guys? Okay, I put up a few more questions. So let's see here. Well, I do have questions, but are we still Please going? Ask. No, go ahead. Yes, go ahead. Ask. I mean, okay, so I came in late. So what's the topic of this week's? 
defense mechanisms. All defense mechanisms. All okay. defense mechanisms. And because they come from Freud, I started off with the history of Freud. I talked about things being unconscious, suppression, repression, Freud's um, ego, his psychosocial, his psychosexual stages. Um, but all of those things, again, are unconscious and it's just defense mechanisms. So are they studying them like blah, 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 blah? What, which defense, me defense, defense mechanism is it? You got or it. Okay. Okay. Do you want to share anything about the test while you're here? Uh, sure. I am. I wrote you an email with all that information. I, I know, but you have like live people. Um, um, Jennifer <clears throat> um, just passed the test. Has it been two weeks? January 23rd. Yay! You get the bell. <laughs> okay. Um, so then, um, you just if um, she can, she can, I, I'll be very honest with you guys. I haven't taken the test since I was like uh, 25. That was like 30 years ago. What I know about the test really is based on my students. So, and I ask you all also to pay it forward. If you'll tell me kind of, I'm not looking for detail, but give me an idea to make sure that what I'm teaching and, and tutoring is what is on the test. Um, so I always ask you to pay it forward. Um, so then, um, you want to share anything? Yeah. Yeah, Jennifer, kind of I'm looking for detail. <laughs> um, Okay, I'm going to stop recording. Wait, wait, wait. I'm going to stop recording, okay? Just because this will be later, and I don't necessarily want that on videotape. So go